When it comes to sauces, soups, and casseroles, it feels like onions are the foundation of every great recipe. And good news for aspiring gardeners, onions are easy to grow. It's been said that if you can poke a hole in the ground, you can grow an onion. Now, of course, they do take more care and maintenance than that, but they are a great crop to fit into the corner of your garden plot, and then you'll be rewarded with fantastic flavor. I'm Charity Nebby. On this episode of Iowa Ingredient, we'll visit Wildwoods Farm to learn how one farmer grows this flavorful vegetable. Then, Chef Oscar Hernandez from 712 Eat Drink in Council Bluffs will create a few entertaining options using onions. All that and more coming up next on Iowa Ingredient. Funding for Iowa Ingredient is provided by the W.T. and Edna M. Dahl Trust. Chef Lisa Laval of Trellis Cafe and the River Center and Chef Michael Laval of the Des Moines Embassy Club. For more than 100 years, the Des Moines Embassy Club has provided a place to dine, celebrate, and do business located in downtown Des Moines and in West Des Moines. And the Friends of Iowa Public Television Foundation. That stinging sensation, you know, the one that causes you to cry when you cut up an onion, that's actually a chemical defense mechanism against all of the critters under the ground, the ones that might want to eat an onion as it grows. But if you can get past the tears, you'll be left with one of the most versatile ingredients in the kitchen. Sauteed, grilled, caramelized, or even raw, the flavor profiles you can pull out of an onion are pretty impressive. Ask any chef what vegetable they consider to be indispensable in cooking, and most of the time the answer will be the onion. It's the essential ingredient in so many recipes. In fact, open Julia Child's cookbook, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, and one of the first things she says all cooks should master is how to properly use the onion. With the onion being such an important staple in the kitchen, this is certainly one ingredient we need a great many of. Thankfully, farmers like Kate Edwards have got us covered. She grows a lot of onions. I have this great picture of me from my very first year and my entire harvest of onions that in one sack that was this big. <laughs> And it's, it's almost laughable looking at how many onions um, that I have now. This truly passionate farmer runs Wild Woods Farm just outside of Iowa City. My passion. It's like what I live for is to farm. Aside from onions, Kate supplies her CSA members with a wide variety of vegetables. The standard line is there's 30 different types and 150 varieties. I actually counted the varieties one year. We grow a lot of your standard crops. I actually used to think vegetable farming was stupid. I thought real farming was corn and beans. Um, but I decided that as a young farmer, I needed to be able to get into farming. And one of the ways to do that was um, vegetable farming. So I put my biases aside. And as an ironic side note, I now love vegetable farming. I farm because it's my passion. I farm because I feel like it's been passed down to me because my grandparents farm and I farm because I want to create a way for other people to farm. So we planted over 40,000 onions. So these onions are called red zeppelin and they will be stored all the way through the winter months. She and her team harvested this crop of onions back in July, but the work is far from over. While they're easy to grow, the key to a long-lasting, great-tasting onion is a multi-step process, and it starts when you plant them. 
When you plant onions in Iowa, you start by planting them as soon as you can get in the soil in April. And then you pretty much can forget about them once you've planted them. But generally speaking, onions are incredibly hardy, so you don't really need to water them unless you have an extraordinary dry period. So the kind of the care and maintenance that you want to do is really weeding. There's like a one week window. The last week of July is when you want to get them out. Because um, as my grandma says, you never want to let an August sun hit your onions. If properly cured, onions should last you well through the winter months. So you can eat a fresh onion. Um, it'll be really strong and really good. But the, if you want to store your onions, the first thing you need to do is find a variety that will store well. Our copra onions will last anywhere from like eight to 10 months. She has the nicest onions. Okay. Once you harvest them, you're gonna want to dry them somehow. We use our greenhouse to dry them, and then in the overflow, we use a wagon in the barn. Once they're on the wagon, they need to stay there for at least a few weeks to be able to get the onion tops completely dried down. And that's really important because that kind of seals off the top of the onion. And then when we cut them, we make sure that we cut above that place where it's sealed. And then we can store it for a long time. It's hard to imagine a kitchen without onions. Thanks to the hard work of people like Kate, we're able to enjoy what is an essential Iowa ingredient. Just off of Madison Avenue in Council Bluffs, you'll find a contemporary American restaurant named for the area code it resides in, 712 Eat Drink. This restaurant offers made from scratch meals, a large selection of beers and wine, and a comfortable and inviting atmosphere that quite literally celebrates the very best of Council Bluffs with a 44-foot mural. We were looking to open another place. We own a sports bar in town, and we honestly were looking towards the, the kind of place that we like to go to. I really wanted to bring something that I felt was a little bit different. We didn't have that here, and we were always going to Omaha. We want to be here. We want to bring business here. And so we were just super excited to bring the whole concept here. And we've had amazing feedback. The positive response to the food of 712 would not have been possible without the talents of its executive chef, Oscar Hernandez. I was uh, a born in Mexico. I was uh, 18 years old when I came uh, to Omaha, Nebraska. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain how, what I like how to cook. It's been always in my life. I think I started cooking like it was probably like 10 years old when my, you know, my mom would, went to work and all that. I was cooking for my brother. 20 years old, I was working at a, a pizzeria place in Omaha and I kind of like the, the pace of, uh, of the kitchen. And Before becoming the executive chef of 712, Oscar started his cooking career as a sous chef for other restaurants in the Council Bluffs Omaha area. It was there that he built his skills and refined his craft. Today, he cooks with a distinctive style and flair that translates into a diverse menu of upscale comfort food with items like a carrot cake with carrot ice cream. It's pretty good. And his popular pork cubano sandwich. So we use uh, Creole mustard, smoked the ham, house pickles with Gruyere cheese. His creations are bursting with flavors. This looks great. Okay. Well, my menu, so I try to do uh, like a new American cuisine. We try to do uh, seasonally, so we change the menu every uh, four months. And try, we try to use uh, local source produce, meat, and everything that we can, as much as we can. Chicken roulade, mashed potatoes, leeks, the pickle pears, lamb of the street, 
Oscar brings a commitment to creating delicious meals using the highest quality ingredients. Chew, you got a little bit of cognac that they're gonna flambe it with there. A little bit of diced pear in there. Very good, you got that oh, apple gris streak. Whether you're sitting down for a tasty lunch, gathering with friends, or finishing your evening with a divine dessert, 712 Eat Drink offers something special each and every time you visit. And now I'm here in the kitchen with Chef Oscar. We're gonna cook with onions. What are we gonna make first? Yeah, we're gonna make a flatbread pizza, kind of. Okay. So we're gonna use an onion. So I'm using a yellow onion. We're gonna caramelize that on the on the saute pan that we have over here. Okay. Uh, all what we're gonna do is uh, add uh, olive oil and salt. All so right. the sweetness of the onion is gonna just pop out on your nice on your pizza. Yeah. Really highlight the the onion here. Okay, so should I add some? Yeah, can you just please just a cup? Let's do like a sure. tablespoon, just drip that, and that's enough. That's all pretty right. good. And uh, we're doing. You wanna just put that in there, so. All right, yep. What we have here is a one onion, whole onion. All right, nice and thin. Yep. I'm glad you sliced it, not me. <laughs> Both there of them in there yeah, at the same time? Yeah, at the same okay. time. So this is gonna take about, about 10 to 15 minutes to cook down right. and get a really nice uh, caramel color, darker. So we're caramelizing these onions. What's special about that caramelization process? So, uh, this, so we're gonna use uh, all the natural sugars that's gonna come mm -hmm. out and uh, they're gonna be sweeter than, than the actual raw onion when you feel that like in a solid. It's gonna crisp, but uh, spicy. So, nice, yeah, so yeah. just sweet sweeter. and delicious. Yeah, that's what it's gonna be. All right, we'll let them do their thing. All right. All right, they're looking pretty good. We've got a yellow onion here, and of course caramelized onions are nice and sweet. Is there a reason you'd pick a yellow onion over another kind of onion? Uh, yes, uh, yellow onion is gonna be milder, so the red onion pretty much you use uh, raw uh -huh. because of the, the, the flavor they have. All right. And the spiciness, so. Nice, all right. And what comes next? So next, what we're doing here, I'm just grab one of the spoons. Uh, we're gonna get the onions out of the pan. So okay. I'm just gonna just use the pan. Here, I'll let you, uh, or, let you dress them up. Okay, so what I, we're gonna do is just get the onions on our puff pastry here. Mm-hmm. This is puff pastry? That's puff pastry, and I just uh, use a rolling plucker. Okay, to, to poke all to the little holes, in holes them. and don't get an so extra. It doesn't Puff all the way, yeah, yeah. Right. So we're gonna make two here. And now that we're gonna be uh, using this spoon for the same. Uh, oh, sure. And then what kind of cheese is this? So we got a Talashio cheese. It's more like a, the flavor is gonna be, flavor is gonna be more like a blue cheese. Oh, okay. Kind of. Uh, it's a set. A, Really soft cheese, more yeah. like a brie. Yeah, it does look a lot like a brie. But this is an Italian cheese. It's an Italian cheese, it's smoky, so mm -hmm. the flavor is gonna be really smoky here, so. All right. It's gonna. And then that is and a blue cheese. And this is a blue cheese. <laughs> it's a gorgonzola cheese is also, it's a sweeter cheese that's gonna help us to not uh, compete against the onion, the flavor of the onion. Mm -hmm. And just try to balance the flavor in there. So we do doing the same with it. So sure. Not too much cheese. We preheat the oven at 400 degrees. Okay. And uh, it's gonna stay in the oven for five, for five to six minutes. All right, nice and fast. So we're gonna just get these babies in here. How do they look? Oh, they look good. So that's nice. the color that you want. And a great way to highlight the onion flavor, which is just when they caramelize, so sweet and delicious. And you're gonna put so a little sage on it? The sage is gonna give you just a little bit more of flavor to the, this uh, flatbread right here. Mm -hmm. And sage always goes with the onions. Yeah. So I love it. So that's pretty much all we gotta do. All right, let's uh, cut one up and give it a try. Let's do it, okay. Mm -hmm. 
so. Perfect. All right. So yeah, let's try yeah. it. All right. Yeah, that onion flavor really shines. What a perfect appetizer, too. Exactly, and it's just less than 30 minutes to do it, so. Yeah, something simple to do for a dinner party. Yep. That is delicious, and the, uh, the gorgonzola cheese really shines exactly. in this application, yeah, does, too. Yeah, yeah. That's nice, that's nice, and then a little sage to just to brighten that, everything yep, up. Yep, that's, yep. that's all it is. That's terrific, thank you. All right, we've had our appetizer. Now we're gonna make a salad. We're gonna make a salad, yes. With, um, with pickled shallots. Yes, uh, pickled shallots. So um, the shallots is gonna be more like a milder onion. It's in the same family. So, mm -hmm. so and it, it just has a less sharp flavor. Right. So it makes a perfect, it's great in a salad. That's it a is. great way to use that. Right? Correct, yeah. All right, so what do we do to pickle shallots? So we're gonna slice those uh, shallots. Okay. I like slicing shallots better. They don't make me cry quite right? so much. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're really crisp, so. Mm -hmm. There you go. All so right, the and next. And then we've got to make a brine, right? Yeah, we got to make a brine, so we're going to use uh, rice boy vinegar. Okay. And same amount of uh, water. All right. So we're going to do an, one cup of that. Rice wine vinegar. One cup of the tub one water. One cup of water. And we're gonna use six ounces of sugar. Yes, right. regular sugar. Table sugar. And let's do just like a pinch of salt. All right. I don't wanna get like a mesh on there, but I mean, that's nice. the one right there. And then we're gonna use about uh, eight peppercorns, black peppercorns, three of these uh, juniper berries. All right. We're gonna do a quarter of the teaspoon of uh, mustard seeds. All right, just a little bit of mustard seeds. So it's gonna be kind of you know, tangy. Yeah, and what's that? And clove, so ground cloves, clove. Ground yeah. cloves, okay. That's that, and we're gonna do this uh, thyme. Oh, nice, thyme, fresh thyme. Fresh thyme, yeah. So we're gonna do three of these springs, mm -hmm. and they're gonna go on the same pot. Can all right, they just all go in there. Thank you, so we're gonna yeah. use to bring this to boil. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna simmer that for five minutes. Just to combine all the all the flavors in there, all right. and after that we're just gonna step uh, the shallots with the brine. Okay. And uh, we're gonna use uh, leave that on the side on the room temperature for uh, 30 minutes, and then they can go into the into the cooler fridge. All right. And how long would you say you'd want to let them sit before uh, you'd actually want to eat them? Well, well, when when I use that on the restaurant, mm -hmm. we use well let them sit for. Three hours to, a, to, a day, to overnight. Oh, okay. So. All right, and then they just get better over time, right? Yeah, it gets, gets a little more flavor. Right. Yeah. All right. And now we're just gonna let it rest. They just do their thing. Yeah, at least about a 30 minutes room temp. Nice. And okay. that they can go to the fridge after that. Terrific. I'll just set them aside because we do have our shallots already pickled. Yeah. Right there and we're gonna assemble a salad. And this is fun because, I mean, onions are like the base for every dish. Yeah. They're in every soup, every casserole, Correct. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always try to hide the, the actual onion, so right. we're, gonna, we're gonna put them in. the onions, but there's always yeah. that savory flavor there, but this is highlighting the Text, onion. Yep. We're gonna do black walnuts. Black walnuts, Iowa walnuts. <laughs> I like apples, so we just grab these uh, green apples. All right, some Granny Smith apples in there. Yep, and uh, we just make a quick balsamic vinaigrette. Okay. So let's pour that. That should be good. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. I love let's, apples in a salad, too. That really is yeah, lovely. And with the shell is gonna be really good. Uh, these pick pickled shallots is gonna be used. It's taking another great flavor. Yeah, and all right the, here. we didn't strain them or anything, the, the. No, actually the liquid is gonna be uh, kinda nice, tangy flavor in your mm -hmm. salad right here. And the last thing that we're gonna use is gonna be our gorgonzola cheese. All right, more yes. gorgonzola, gorgonzola cheese, cheese. It's gonna be good on this. Uh, yeah, a wonderful shallot. combination. Yeah, there you go.
at all. Nice, and I am excited to give it a try. Oh yeah, let's try that. Here you go. I'm gonna make sure I get some of these pickled, pickled shallots with the, the gorgonzola yeah. cheese. There we go. So if you can have a little bit of these of walnuts, mm -hmm. they're gonna make it good. Yeah, that's a great flavor combination. I love the pickled salad, shallots really do come through, that very mild onion flavor with the nice brine. A great way to start a meal, or maybe a meal in itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, that is terrific. Chef Oscar, thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you. dream of having an abundant flower patch or a bountiful vegetable garden, but just don't have the space? Container gardening can be an excellent way to grow a variety of different plants. Anything you can plant in the ground can also be planted in a container. Cindy Haynes at Iowa State University Extension will introduce us to some unique and flourishing containers at Ryman Gardens. She'll also show us how to plant our own herb garden. I love herbs in containers because I can take them outside in the summer and then bring them inside in the winter. So when we're thinking about containers or container gardening, we want to start with a pot that's about the right size, that has a drainage hole, and that we can put plenty of plants in it. So I'm going to start by filling this up. I've only filled it up to the point where I can put those side plants in, and then I'm going to put them in and then fill in with more soil around them. So take a little bit of parsley, which is pretty nice looking. I'm going to tease the roots just a little bit. Roots that kind of circle around and around and around, they don't have a tendency to go out. So I'm just going to break that up a little bit. I'm actually going to get rid of some of those lower roots. And then I'm going to put it in one side. I'm going to do the same thing with some chives. Pop it out of the pot. Nice root system again. Chives, um, great herb. And you can easily grow this one from seed. Got some thyme on the side here too. Once again, break up the roots just a little bit. So now I've got parsley, chives, thyme. I'm gonna fill up with just a little bit more soil and plant a basil in the top. And then I'm gonna put it right here in the center. What I've used is potting soil. This is a potting mix, and you can buy this at a garden center or even a discount store. It's probably the best soil for containers because it has uh, these little white pieces of perlite in it that help make sure that it's really well drained. Uh, it usually it's pretty high in organic matter, it's light. It makes it easy to carry the container and things drain really well. The problem with potting soil is that it dries out a little faster than garden soil. So plants in containers with a potting mix will need to be watered more frequently. So one of the biggest issues with container plantings is figuring out when you need to water. The best thing to do is actually to feel the soil. You should let the top inch or two dry out, but it's usually a little more moist the farther down that you go. You can put yourself on a schedule to check everything once a week, but you don't want to water once a week if the plants don't need it. Deadheading is the removal of spent flowers, and it often encourages that plant to rebloom again for you. When I'm deadheading, I'm going back to a node or a set of leaves that's going to cause it to branch and fill out just a little bit more. So this is an example of a tomato in a container, though it's a little unusual of a container. This is a torpedo here at Ryman Gardens. Tomatoes work really well in containers. Usually we look for ones that are a little more compact, that don't get quite as large, though the habit's still going to be the same. So pick plants that maybe require a little less staking or you're going to have to have staking. And plants in containers will need more water and more fertilizer. They're still equally as productive as they would be in the ground, but they just might need a little more care. 
Gardens of all shapes and sizes bring life, beauty, and personality to any space. Plus, the satisfaction and convenience of a home harvest can't be beat. We hope you'll be inspired to give container gardening a try. That's it for this week's show. Thank you for exploring Iowa's edible landscape with us. I'm Charity Nebbe. See you next time for another episode of Iowa Ingredient. Keep in mind that circumstances are always changing, so please take a moment to check ahead if you're planning to visit a restaurant, farm, or event featured on the show. Funding for Iowa Ingredient is provided by the W.T. and Edna M. Dahl Trust. Chef Lisa Laval of Trellis Cafe and the River Center and Chef Michael Laval of the Des Moines Embassy Club. For more than 100 years, the Des Moines Embassy Club has provided a place to dine, celebrate, and do business located in downtown Des Moines and in West Des Moines. And the Friends of Iowa Public Television Foundation.